Tim, now that Ford have stopped making the Escort, are they still a big seller? Yeah, very much so for us. Even though they've just been superseded by the Ford Focus, uh, the Escort represents good value for money. So, yeah, a very, very good selling car for us indeed. Now, they've been around a long time. It seems like an eternity since they've been around. Yeah, they have. Um, what sort of models have we got here today? Well, what you, well, this particular model is the basic model, which is the entry level. Um, um, which is just the start off of the range. There is a good range with the vehicles. They start off from entry levels, from L models, LXs, SIs, gears, GTIs, uh, varied of engine sizes, and of course the diesels. What sort of price would this be, have been new and, and what is it worth today? This particular model, like I say, is the 1.4 i5 door. This was circa, I think it was just around about £9,000 new and we've got this particular model up for £5,100. And specification on this entry level? Um, a very, very basic car in all honesty. It's got velour upholstery, um, power steering, driver's airbag, five-speed gearbox and a radio cassette in it and that's it. There's no electric sunroofs or central locking on this particular model. What sort of things tend to go wrong with the Escorts, if anything? To be honest with you, they're a tried and tested car and there's very, very little things. Obviously, we've been out the amount of time they've been out. Everything that they've had has been ironed out, so there's very, very little problems with them. When you're looking at the sportier models, something like the GTIs, which are the versions which get very heavily driven in comparison to your, your diesel models or your 1.4s, which are obviously like secondary vehicles or small family cars, uh, the GTIs do come under a little bit of pressure, which they can get knocked about a bit, tyre wear and just excessive driving, really, and just look for body wear on them. The Escort doesn't gain the accolade of Britain's favourite car for nothing. You have to sell cars by the bucket load, almost literally, to be able to claim that sort of title. And that's exactly what Ford did with the Escort. There are so many of them about. We, we've either had one or certainly known somebody who's had an Escort at some stage in their life. There are many loyal devotees to the Escort name too. And at times you begin to wonder why, because the cars really are rather bland. The styling is not particularly attractive. They look outdated. They don't ride and handle very well. This is one of the later versions. This is a Mark V Escort introduced first in, what, 1995 on an M plate. And you can still find them on S and T plates that now just finished production from the Ford Halewood factory, which now goes on to build bigger and better things in the shape of the new small Jaguar. The styling inside the cabin, well, it gained something of a sort of Mondeo look to it, this sort of dashboard effect. And lots of different engines, lots of different model ranges, L, LX, GL, GLS, up to the top of the range gears, there's cabriolets and estates as well, plenty to choose from. One thing that is a must if you're looking for an Escort is to go for something that's got power steering. That is an absolute necessity. You should certainly find power steering on all later model Escorts, but if you find an early one, check to see because it really does make a huge difference. As I can bear testament, we have an HRH Mark IV Escort without power steering as our second car and it really is hard work. Now, of course, the Escorts are cheap to run, they're cheap to insure, and if you're looking for a sort of car that you can look after yourself, you can service yourself, you're not worried about taking it to a main agent to get it serviced every six or eight, nine thousand miles or so, then the Escort is ideal.